There are regulations to how this is supposed to look, so if they all kind of look the same and you just glaze over it, know that a designer probably spent two-ish hours setting it up. Hi, welcome to my series Graphic Designer Reviews, where I, a graphic designer, take you on a little show and tell journey where I introduce you to natural product brands that you may have never heard of and then I just talk about it and give my honest feedback on the designs. I don't necessarily influence you to buy something to try the product. I just want to show you the packaging design because it's what's on the outside that matters. Editing Karen here. I just wanted to jump in and say I am so sorry for jumping in so early in the video, but I wanted to mention my camera is just out of focus and it will be for the next few minutes, but that might, the audio is still good. So please stick around and just ignore my face. Okay, thank you. Back to the video. My goal this year is to post a video every week and I think I'm doing pretty well. And speaking of well, how about them sports ball teams, huh? Happy big football game eve. You can tell I'm a super huge football fan. She said sarcastically. So even though I don't watch sport ball games, <laughs> I do love a good snack party. So I thought for today that I would make a video on snacks. So I went to Sprouts and I found this popcorn, AKA, Pipcorn, how cute. Have you ever heard of it? But I didn't buy it because I was, I had a list and I was trying to stick to my budget and I was like, I don't need to spend any money on snacks right now, right? Um, so I go to natural grocers the next day and I see this <laughs> exact bag next to this bag next to this bag. So rationally, I was like, why buy one when I could just buy three? So I may have gone a little overboard. I'm going to talk about the, like I've never tried these before. So I'm going to talk about the brand and manufacturing and container and design and copy like normal. But at the end, as a treat, I'm gonna try them all because why not? So I don't, I'm not gonna hold these the whole time. I don't want it to make it a lot of crinkling noise while I'm talking. So I've never tried this brand before, but the first thing that caught my eye was Heirloom. And you typically don't see a lot of Heirloom corn products at the grocery store. Like if you are in US America, going to the grocery store snack aisle, looking at the corn snacks, um, you don't see Heirloom, you see conventional corn because that is the majority of what's grown here and that upsets a lot of people's tummies, mine included. So let's talk about the Pipcorn brand. Um, first of all, I actually found an episode of a podcast where the founders are being interviewed and I'll link that below for fun. I'm not done, I'm only 30 minutes in, so. So I learned that the company was founded by brother and sister duo, Jennifer and Jeff Martin. And Jennifer had celiac, so she already couldn't eat foods with gluten or snacks with gluten. And for the most part, she couldn't even eat a lot of corn snacks. So I'm guessing at the time she was talking about this, it was probably early to mid 2000s. And let me tell you, gluten-free products were scarce. So one day <laughs> she went to the farmer's market and tried some heirloom corn from a vendor and the rest is history. So she and her brother and her brother's wife launched Pipcorn in 2012, and they have more than just popcorn. They have these cinnamon twists that you just saw, cheese balls, crackers, and a lot more. And I also saw that they have a booth at Natural Products Expo West, which is like the Coachella for natural products. And I really wish I could go this year, but tickets to natural products are the same price as Coachella, basically. So I'll just have to wait till next year. Anyway, let's talk about the manufacturing and container. So I went to Google to look up the materials that they used and lo and behold, I stumbled across this website and look who's there. So if I'm assuming based on what I've seen on this website that if they are still the same vendor 
that Pipcorn uses. They're using something known as a roll stock. Essentially, I can't even explain it to you, and if I put a video here, it would be super boring. <laughs> So just know that the process is really cool. If you're a nerd, it was very interesting to me, okay? If you're just a graphic designer looking for a mock-up uh, for your popcorn label design, just, you can search snack bag mock-up and that will just give you everything you need. <laughs> And then I think the only other thing to mention is that based on their website, uh, the print job itself, like the colors and how the, the inks lay on the design, um, I'm referencing it here, but I also have a picture right there. Uh, <laughs> So it's also like they use a digital print and you can tell that it's a digital print by the way that it is. I'm just kidding. If you look really, if you look up close, like really up close, if you use like a magnifying glass, you'll see that this package in particular just has a lot of dots. I guess, I guess they're pixels. I don't know, but have you seen a comic book where they do like a lot of all those dots and they like cross and make different colors. That's what this is. But as you can see, like the print shop is really nice and all of those elements together, the digital printing and using like a roll stock, this is a very cost effective package. And we love a brand that saves money on packaging because when they save money on packaging, we save money on the product. And that's why I could buy three of these. <laughs> the one, the one issue that I found is the popcorn bag. I want to try to review this without making um, a lot of crinkling noises, but I don't think that's going to be possible. This little flap. It's the only thing I don't like and it's only on this bag. They might be moving away from this bag in particular because look, this one doesn't have one. This is the girl bag and this is probably the boy bag. I'm still in elementary school. But the reason why I don't like the flap is because it obstructs not only the copy, but the barcode. So hopefully they change that because it's annoying. I didn't see how the cashier scanned it because I, um, I hate people waiting in line behind me and they didn't have a cart re uh, basket return. So I ran to the front door to put my basket up and then ran back. And everyone saw that, but I, I was like, I'm gonna save time. <sighs> I didn't see what he did. Anyway, I'm going to give the overall packaging job a uh, four out of five. And that is just because this one has that little flap. So close. Let's get into the design review. As always, um, I'm under the assumption that you already know the design basics, like you already know that a little bit of the vocabulary. We're just gonna put it all together right now and talk and review the graphic design of Pipcorn and just pretend that the marketing department of Pipcorn called me up and they're like, hey, best friend, do you mind like just looking at Pipcorn's labels for a few minutes and giving me some design feedback? And then I would say, uh, yeah, for sure. Like, let me look at these files and I will take a look. Maybe one day Pipcorn will see this video and they'll say like, oh, you know what? Those edits did make a lot of sense. So we can just change that for the next version. Like it's not that big of a deal. That's kind of my mindset going into these. So let's get into it. The design actually changed hands a few times. The first round of designs around 2012 was from Freddie Taylor and Noah Collin. There's a design agency called Murmur Creative and that does not necessarily reflect what I saw on the shelf, what I have right here. So I wonder what happened if they are still the designers they just updated but didn't update their portfolio. I don't know uh, because neither of them look like the current design. So I do wonder since the current design looks so similar to the Murmur design, if they are still designing for them or or if they're like doing it in-house i guess we'll never know because i could not find it on my second google search so i've never done a multiple packaging design review this year if this is your first time watching me review multiple packagings it's gonna be so fun um so i will be reviewing them together overall as you can see, they look 
amazing together. I do love the color differentiation. I put them, I put them down because I was making too much noise. So overall, they look great together. On a shelf, they look amazing. They definitely stand out. They look like siblings for sure. And I love the texture of the snack, like the, the photography of the snack. You can see all the texture on it over the bold color. Like it really makes it pop. That was terrible on like three levels. Uh, I super, watch me gush. Like I did not do this for the previous videos, but anyway, let me just have my moment. I love the top section of this bag. You might not even notice it the first time you look at it, which is what makes it so smart. So I love that you see farmer's market imagery and you see a bunch of words that you probably didn't think you were reading at first. <laughs> so they have like keywords like sustainable and tasty and real and pee and like having it subdued like this on the package is such a smart move. It doesn't take away from any of the hierarchy and then it just adds just a level of visual intrigue. I think it's a smart move and it's not overpowering at all. The, the subduedness or the ghosted ...ness of the graphics are just really nice on the package and at most it is a beautiful design that elevates the package and includes more interest. Like I said, you like look at it more than once and at least it's subliminal messaging. Let's talk about the logo real quick. I don't know what it, well, I don't know what it's doing. I don't know what the O is supposed to do. Is it an exclamation mark? Is it an O that's popping? I don't know. Pipcorn. So from what I saw, everything is consistent across all of the bags. All the information is the same. The hierarchy for the most part is the same. And I was, I was like wondering if I could see any inconsistencies and I was pleasantly surprised. Let's just talk overall. The logo is huge and I think that's okay. Unlike other things that I've reviewed, snacks are supposed to be fun and there's not a lot going on. <laughs> Like for supplements, you need to know what is exactly is in that thing and what are you taking and how much do you need to take. But for snacks, they're snacks. You don't have to think too much about it. It's not that hard. You want a snack, you buy a snack. Um, I am noticing that the logo on the cheese balls bag is darker than the other two. So I'm not completely sure if that's the print job or if that's the art file. That's just what I'm seeing with my eyeballs. So back to the hierarchy. I do like the hierarchy. I think this is the best visual hierarchy that I've seen on a package that I've reviewed this year so far. So you have the logo, who they are. You have the name, what it is, and then the flavor, what's in it. And then like the marketing bullet points and like how healthy it is. And they have all those fun little certifications that they paid a lot of money for at the bottom, along with the made with heirloom corn that they just made up. Because if you're a graphic designer, you can make up anything, literally anything. But it's best if you make something up and you can back it up so they can actually back up that they are made with heirloom corn. So basically it's just a marketing tactic more than anything. They say heirloom all around the bag, but because it's in a unique spot and it looks a certain way, we're like, oh, that looks official. They must really be heirloom. So a few individual things that I don't love. So I'm going to start out with the amount and the net weight. So as you can see, all the net weight amounts are in different places and that's based on the photograph of the snack. Like this one's all the way up to the edge I, and, I, and I didn't like how I had to search for it. To use what you have, I would recommend like trying to just play with it, flip it around, see if you can fit it in a certain way. Use AI because all graphic designers love that. Or you could just reshoot the photo. Just spend a couple hundred dollars, couple thousand dollars on a photographer in a studio and just reshoot the photo real quick. <laughs> I'm just kidding, it's not that serious. Um, the second thing I will say, there's only two things, which is wild, um, is that this new symbol on both the cheddar balls and the um, cinnamon twists is that 
I do really like how the purple badge does it. I like how they use the little, um, the, the darker secondary color as that inline shape. But on the cinnamon twist, they use a different color. So, so I would just have the dark maroon inline instead of that yellow, um, cause then it looks like something's missing. And I know it's not, but it just, if the purple one has the dark inline and the dark red maroon does not, then I'm just like, that's a little inconsistent there. So that's an easy switch that you could make on the next version if you so choose. And I really think that's it. So let's go to the back of the bags. To the back now, y'all. One hop this time. Right away, I love that their story is on the top left. It's like the first thing my eyes see because in America, we read left to right, top to bottom. So this is the first thing that my eyeballs stop at. Um, on their journey down the bag. Since I see a lot of pictures on the label, my, my wonder right here is why don't they just have a picture of the founders here instead of the logo again, because I personally already saw the logo. It's the same size as my head, so I don't know why I'm seeing it again here, but that was not my decision to make. I mean, I like that they have their signatures, but some part of me wishes that I could like put a face to the name. Um, and then with the whole farmer's market look, like just having their picture makes it feel like a small company that like, oh, they, this is them. And I'm like, I don't know them personally, but like, I feel like I do because I see them like three times on every flavor of bag. So I realized that they probably talked about this pre-design stage, but I want y'all to know, Pipcorn, that I would love to see y'all's faces. So moving on to the nutrition facts. So supplements have supplement facts, and food and snacks and beverages have nutrition facts, and all those companies are legally obligated by the FDA to put that information on there to help you and me, um, and to also keep those companies accountable. So theirs looks good. I know that I'm just like kind of flying through because I'm like talking about three things at once, but just know that this was actually designed, like there are regulations to how this is supposed to look. So if they all kind of look the same and you just glaze over it, know that a designer probably spent two-ish hours setting it up and making it look really nice. So I recognize all the hard work that was put into this. And I know that like once you make it, then you can just template it out and then use it on all the other ones. But I know for the first one, it took forever. So <laughs> unless there's something you can find online, which I haven't yet, and I'm just like doing it the long way for no reason. And I wasted a week of my life for whatever reason. But anyway. I'm not crying. I just want to say, again, the nutrition facts was amazing. So, like, you see something so boring and just breeze through it, but then you don't realize, like, when, if you're a designer, you gotta make that. It's like, I have, like, a quiet appreciation for all the nutritional facts and all the creative barcodes out there. I love them. I see them. And I appreciate them. Let's go to the next panel. So I'm seeing a few differences. One of the things that I see that's different is the um, QR code. I like that they show their other products because I've never heard of Pipcorn before. And if I'm just seeing one bag of popcorn at Sprouts, like how am I supposed to know they have other things? I love how they have the their social and website right under the pictures of their products. That feels like it makes a lot of sense to me. Um, and that kind of shows me that the company is like run by young people because they don't treat the website and social as an afterthought. They actually want you to see it right in the middle. I don't know why that's particularly important to be honest, but I just wanted to mention that. So next, let's look at this little paragraph. So they use this section to talk about their heirloom corn, which I think is a smart marketing move. I didn't know exactly what that meant before, and I'm, I'm sure a lot of other people don't know that either. So that was very helpful in clarifying what this product is and why heirloom is so special. And I also like that they bold the letters because when I'm looking at a wall of text, I appreciate when I have 
things that my eyes can anchor to. And also, I think I have a type. Pipcorn and the last two products that I've reviewed all have like a color band kind of motif. I need to stop. I don't know why I'm just drawn to a pop of color. I don't know. And I'm sorry. All that's left is the barcode and I will always, always advocate for a more creative looking barcode. That is also functional because you need to have a functional barcode no matter what you sell. But yeah, barcodes don't have to be boring and I will shout that from the rooftops. Lastly, I should have mentioned this in manufacturing, but their lot numbers are all over the place. So I think either manufacturing and quality assurance need to get on the same page, or you could also just have the designer designate a spot right under the nutrition facts panel for the lot number, because this is wild. This one was, this one's crazy to me. Why are you on the, the side edge? So overall, I think I'm going to give all of them a collective four out of five, which is amazing. So let's talk about the copy. I read everything and I didn't have to. <laughs> so the hierarchy was great on the front, the best one that I've seen this year. And on the back, the origin story, this little paragraph, it was also great. And I love how they changed the story to be product specific, which is really smart because it also helps maintain the paragraph size. And you wanna keep that consistent so that the rest of the design does not change because that is annoying when that happens. Um, and then we go down to the heirloom little marketing blurb on why that's special. And I, I appreciated that it was really easy to read and understand. Um, and I really appreciate the type of content that was chosen for the packaging. It was very smart. I obviously was sold. It looks like a lot, but when you actually get to read it, you just realize that the words are just really large. <laughs> So I'm giving it a five out of five. I haven't given a five this year until today. So let's get that total drum roll, please. I know that there's not an actual drum roll or even a sound effect because I didn't edit that in. That is a 13 out of 15, which gives us a popcorn rating of a B plus. that that feels good to give a good grade it's not that i want to give bad grades it's that i want to give out fair grades and i think a b plus is fair and this is the highest ranking this year hooray if it feels like i glossed over a lot of copy and a lot of tiny design details that's because I did. Three different packages is a lot to get through. <laughs> and I also wrote and recorded all of this in three hours because I didn't have time last weekend and I won't have time this weekend. So I just had to get it done because I really wanted to talk about Pipcorn right before the big sport ball game. Thank you so much for watching. I'm so appreciative that you've gotten this far in the video. Um, I'm about to try the Pipcorn products that I just talked about. Let me know. If you have any suggestions on stuff I should talk about next, please let me know in the comments. I'm always open to trying new things. I love trying new things. So let's try them. I'm not gonna give this a rating or anything. I'm just trying it and we're just gonna have fun together. My cats are gonna go bananas in a few minutes. Look at her poofy tail. This is peak zoomy hour, so bear with me if you hear anyone running around. So there's two ways we could do this. We could either pour the snack into the bowl or my favorite thing that I learned in college, thanks Daniel and Jasmine, is you take the bottom of the bag and you fold it inside itself kind of so one second
magic. And you don't have to dirty a bowl, so do I need this? Probably not. It doesn't smell like truffles to me. It smells like, you know that canned popcorn you get at Christmas that has like the caramel white cheddar and butter? This smells like the white cheddar flavor. Let's wait for the taste test. Okay, here we go. So for the cinnamon twists, first thing that I'm noticing when I look at this is that it looks just like the Taco Bell cinnamon twist that I had growing up as a kid. And um, I did look at a few Reddit posts that had Pipcorn in them for some reason. And they said that it's highly addictive. So I'm worried that I'm gonna be spending all my money on these. Just looking at them, the kernels are super tiny. I would say they're about half the size as regular popcorn. Uh, so that means there are more of them in here, right? And then the cheese balls, they look like cheese balls, but they, um, they smell like aged white cheddar. So that is a bonus. Let's start with the cinnamon twists. So they do, they taste a lot like the Taco Bell cinnamon twists, except for the texture is a little coarser, which is not a bad thing. It's very crunchy, which is wonderful. And you can tell that um, it has a, a much cleaner flavor than you would get at Taco Bell. Um, like at Taco Bell, you could taste the fry oil. In the cinnamon twists, you could taste the oil, but it's not like all you can taste if you know what I mean. This is wonderful. I would definitely have this at the big game party. This is like a perfect snack. That one was for the road. Next up, truffle. In the ingredients, it said there was rosemary as a preservative, which is really smart. I really do appreciate the use of real ingredients as preservatives instead of like chemical powders. Let's see if they taste truffly at all. I do see some little tiny brown flecks, so I'm like, maybe it's real, maybe it's burnt popcorn. I don't know, let's try it. So like I mentioned, it didn't smell truffly, but it tastes super truffly. I can taste the salt, I can taste the truffle, I can taste the popcorn, and it is just a party over here right now. I will definitely be eating this at the big snack party with Taylor Swift. Moving on, I'm wasting battery eating, my, eating these snacks. Okay, we got the cheddar. Obviously, more air in this one than the other ones, but let's go. I have not had cheese puffs in a long time. I was craving them. Um, when I was pregnant, but I didn't want to eat them because I couldn't find any healthy ones and I didn't look hard enough and these are so good. They also have a yellow cheddar too. So they have like the a yellow cheddar that looks like cheddar and not like a neon highlighter and then these, um, but yeah, it, it looks like a white cheddar ball. So, so good. We'll keep this at the kids snack table as well as the adult snack table. These are all great additions to any football game party. Thank you again. If you got to the, the real for real end of this video, thank you so much for just watching and supporting all of my graphic design antics. Um, let me know if you want me to try more products. Let me know if you don't want me to try more products. I'll just talk about what I have around the house, but I just wanted to try snacks, so. So leave a comment subscribe, do the things, um, click the links in the description for inspiration, and I will see you in the next video.